welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jumalke. Nice to meet you. I'm a femininity coach and a woman's mentor. If you love videos like this, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you can continue to get more great content. Okay, so ladies, today we're talking about, um, what are we talking about? How to overcome unfeminine people-pleasing behaviors. All right, so when it comes to being a feminine woman, <laughs> You have to really know yourself, know your identity, understand your worth and your value. And a lot of times people pleasing will hinder our fem femininity. Okay. So people pleasing is exactly what it sounds like. It's just, you're motivated to please people. It's not necessarily a good thing. It's not like just serving people and helping people, but your core motivation for doing things stems from a place of trying to people please. So I wanna break down people pleasing just a little bit um, to give you more insight. Then I will share five tips on how you can overcome people pleasing behaviors. So people pleasing comes from shame and rejection. Okay, so a lot of times people, people, people are people pleasing simply because of shame and rejection they felt most likely from some type of childhood trauma. So very early on, you probably learned that it is unsafe to be an inconvenience to other people. And you learned that through shame, which is why I'm a strong believer that I don't believe shame is the best tactic for people to grow, for long-term growth. I think it just makes people complicit but doesn't actually involve true transformation and it can be damaging over time. So for some of us, maybe we've had parents that, again, I don't know, they could be suff suffering from their own mental illness or their own ignorance and they can put shame on children when they become an inconvenience to them and just trying to make children compliant but not necessarily understand and to grow and to, de to develop. So for example, let's say if, I don't know, something happened to you in school, let's say you got sick and you're at school and let's say if your parent had to pick you up, there's this direct or indirect shame of like, but see, now I had to leave my job and I had to come and get you as if it's your fault that you got sick, you know? <laughs> so you have parents like that, that when a, a child is inconvenienced to them, they will now heap upon shame and guilt in order to make them complicit. And for children, we want to be loved, we wanna be accepted. There's also a sense of rejection that goes on as well. So when we people please, we're trying to avoid those feelings of shame and rejection. So we try to be overly pleasant, we may over explain ourselves, we may keep ourselves small in order to gain the approval of other people. Okay, so that's really what it's tied to. It's also tied to perfectionism as well. It's not uncommon for someone who's struggling with people pleasing to also struggle with perfectionism. Okay, so that's just a little bit of background when it comes to people pleasing to understand it on a deeper level. But let's get into five um, ways that you can overcome people pleasing behaviors. So the first way that you can overcome people pleasing behaviors, the biggest way, is to have boundaries and learn to say no. So a lot of times when people are motivated by people pleasing, there's this internal voice in their head that says you're not good enough. That if you say no, people won't like you. Or, oh, in order for me to be loved and approved and affirmed, I have to make everyone happy at the expense of myself. But let me tell you something, that is a lie straight from the pits of hell. People respect you more when you have boundaries, not when you don't have boundaries. It's a very flawed thinking because you think that something is internally wrong with you. And in a way, people pleasing is trying to mask and fix that. Um, that, that feeling that you feel like you're not good enough or something is just deeply flawed with you as a human being, which is again, it's um, tied to shame. And that's just further from the truth. I know for the spaces that I'm around, it's just I have boundaries and people respect me because of those boundaries. They're like, oh, whoa, she's someone who has boundaries. I have to treat her in such a way because she has certain boundaries about herself. So you need to know how to say no. You're not going to get a medal for being a martyr. And so many women feel as if the more I pour, the more I give, the more I sacrifice, then someone is gonna love me, then someone's gonna accept me, then someone's gonna affirm me. No, the heck, they not. 
you need to know how to say no next okay number two is put yourself in a position to be misunderstood this is going to be very hard for a lot of us because again from people pleasing it's that sense of shame and rejection we don't want to be misunderstood we want to be accepted it's a deep feeling of wanting to be accepted by others so to put yourself in a position to be misunderstood is really hard a lot of times people who struggle with people pleasing we can also be very defensive we can also be just like always wanting to defend ourselves over explain over share as a form of defense simply because we don't want people to misunderstand or we don't want people to reject us and we want to seem pleasing to everyone we want to be understood but you have to put yourself in a position to be misunderstood because when you start setting boundaries with people people are going to misunderstand you and that is okay and you have to know that really god is your defender at the end of the day a lot of us don't know god as a defender we don't know god as a redeemer and we try to fix everything we're like oh i don't want to be missing no let the let people misunderstand you if people do not have the courage to ask before they assume that has nothing to do with you there are some people who are bent on misunderstanding you when you fall out of expectation of a certain box people have for you or when you have a certain boundaries or when you say no people will misunderstand you especially if they're so used to you in one dynamic when you shift out of that dynamic people will misunderstand you and to be honest like so what you know who i actually look to and i admire in a way i admire beyonce and her privacy simply because she's just living her life like <laughs> you when she is talked about in the tabloids and people are saying stuff about her she's not going on a talk show and like she's not doing that she's not responding back and having a press release she just allows herself to be misunderstood she lives her life she makes her music she makes her money and she goes home you know and that's it you know so yeah like let people misunderstand you uh, i know it's really difficult for a lot of us but it's okay next is allow yourself to offend people again this is going to be really hard and it goes back to being misunderstood but offense is a bit different and some people if you set boundaries with them or if you just want to walk in your femininity you're embracing your femininity you say you know what no i'm gonna go this way i'm gonna do this i'm gonna become all that i'm supposed to be in this life people will be offended why because you are not suiting a need that they have or you're hitting at a certain insecurity that they have or you are just becoming an inconvenience to them or they have their own rejection and they're projecting it on you either way when you step out of the realm of people pleasing and you start walking in confidence in who you're supposed to be or you start taking steps to heal and to go on your own journey and you leave people behind the sting of being left behind is going to hurt no matter what you're going to have some people that will sit here and pick apart and villainize you pick apart your actions oh you should have done it like this you should have done it and they'll try to shame you for making decisions for yourself they're going to shame you let's say if you have parents that want you to become a doctor and you said no they're going to be offended and it has nothing to do with you. They would say, well, you should have said it like that. People say, well, you should have said it like that. You should have done it like that. Your tone wasn't this way. And you have some people that literally will, they're again, because of their own rejection, they're now pushing that on you and you are going to offend people. Allow yourself to offend people. It's okay. It is okay. Next thing, don't micromanage people's emotions. When people feel a type of way, when they misunderstand you, when they're hurt, when they're angry, when they're confused, do not micromanage their emotions there's so many people that pride themselves in being an empath which it's not a spiritual gift i mean not according to the word of god but it's not really a spiritual gift i think we're kind of over glamorizing um being an empath because it could be a reflex to trauma if you had a parent or you had parents that had emotional not emotional um mental illness diagnosed or undiagnosed you had to be able to uh, react to their emotions you had to be able to predict 
their emotions in order for you to survive for a sense of self-preservation so you have to be overly sensitive to the needs of others so that you would not take the brunt of just any type of assault or attack on you whether that was a verbal abuse that was emotional abuse mental abuse to protect yourself you had to be able to be like okay mom's angry okay okay my dad okay they're not pleased you had to be able to be overly sensitive to other people's emotions but at the end of the day when you're a grown adult you need to allow grown adults to deal with your emotions themselves because sometimes when people struggle with people pleasing and they may have a gift of mercy, they may try to coddle and overcompensate for that person. They see, like let's say for example, you say no to a person and you're anticipating that they feel angry. So then you try to over explain yourself and you're trying to not allow them to feel that emotion. You're trying to soothe that emotion. It can also be a form of enabling because you put yourself in a position to be manipulated. Um, and then to backtrack into where you just were. So yes, even if people are hurt by what you're doing, even if people are upset and they're angry about you setting boundaries and they are misunderstanding you, do not micromanage their emotions. Don't try to protect them from feeling whatever negative emotion they need to feel. They are grown adults. Let them feel it. The only people that need to be micromanaging their emotions are children because they don't understand their emotions. So you have to walk them through it, right? What I'm trying to say is when you're a grown adult, don't try to protect people from be feeling bad emotions because you feel bad and you're empath and you're feeling how they feel. Mm -mm. Part of being a feminine woman is emotional intelligence. You have to be able to separate this is how I feel as an individual and this is how you feel as an individual. I do not feel the same way that you do. And some people will try to shame you and try to guilt you for that. Say, oh, aren't you upset that you made me cry? Aren't you, you don't feel this way? Well, you were too harsh. You were too this, you were too that. No, guard your heart. Guard your heart, okay? Guard your heart. Now, the last thing that you, um, to, to overcome people-pleasing behavior, don't try to prove yourself. This is actually people-pleasing behavior, even though it may not seem like it. The reason I say that is because Sometimes I think for a lot of us, we're trying to break generational curses, one, without Jesus, but two, we have a very narrow view on how generational curses work. Some of us are so concerned about locking the front door that we're not checking that the windows, the back door, the patio, the balcony, and the enemy is still going to come in some type of way. We actually have to deal with it at the source. So let me say, for example, let's say if you have, I don't know, parents that struggle with perfectionism and image management and they wanted you to go to school to be a doctor let's say but you don't want to be a doctor and you wanted to do something else so they shamed you for that you got pushed back okay but let's say you did whatever you wanted to do and you became successful a lot of times what happens is people will still try to feel validated and vindicated like look see look I made it look I have a lot of money look I became everything that you told me I wouldn't but so what you don't owe them anything you don't owe anyone anything and this is why you have to overcome things like rejection and shame and people pleasing so what because you're still being ruled by people pleasing you're still trying to get the affirmation the approval of other people you don't have to flaunt your money. You don't have to flaunt your marriage. You don't have to flaunt, <laughs> you know, your lifestyle from a heart posture of being approved. Not to say everyone who does that is looking for affirmation. Some people are just sharing. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm still saying for a lot of us who are overcoming these things, we don't have to go back to those people who misunderstood us and try to still defend ourselves by proving them wrong. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to prove your worth, your value, your decisions, you don't owe anyone anything. Not even your parents, not your friends, not social media. You don't owe people nothing. The Bible says the only thing you owe people is love. That's the only depth um, withstanding. That's it. That is it. Yeah. Point blank, period. Full stop. Okay? So <laughs> that's basically um, the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Now, this, the crazy thing about this video 
It may be very eye-opening for a lot of you, but I can probably guess 99% of you will not employ the things I just said simply because it takes a lot of courage to put yourself in a position to be rejected. It takes a lot of courage to potentially cut off relationships, to fall out of people's expectations. It puts you in a very uncomfortable position, but God is your strength and your weakness. Okay, so, and these are just the things that you have to do in order to overcome that and be everything that you're called to be in this lifetime. But let me know your comments on this in the description box. By the way, um, if you are a woman, if you are a, a woman who is trying to grow in these things and you're trying to grow in your femininity, embrace your femininity, you want to stop being a people pleaser, you want to stop being a pick me, and you want things to really change, you feel is grappling in your spirit, definitely do schedule a femininity discovery call with me. All the information will be in the description box. And last but not least, my ministry, Single on Purpose International, we're having a three-day conference July 30th to August 1st in Atlanta, Georgia. It is a hybrid con conference. Make sure you do grab your tickets. All the information will be in the description box below. All right, see you guys later. Bye.